so I've got a little bit of a story for everyone. Imagine you were in my situation like six years ago, um, just graduated from grad school with a degree in business management. You're ready to uh, basically change the world with your degree that you have and uh, start applying for jobs. And because of your, your education, you have a lot of experience. You're basically overqualified for everything and underqualified for the jobs you want to get because you have a master you have a no experience but you do have a master's degree um and basically you've gone from feature thought leader to maybe i can work for the post office which is exactly what happened to me so in my my idea is that that that's exploitation i mean if i wanted to be overworked and undervalued i could have just stayed in school and got on a PhD at that point. But um, the job that I actually got was for the post office, unfortunately. It was, uh, the position was city carrier assistant, which is a fancy way of saying, get ready to sweat through every shirt you own while hauling packages around. Basically, sort of like CrossFit, but you don't even, don't get any Instagram followers from it. I was out of shape and pretty much dying after delivering to just one house and the best part there's always uh, some supervisor to tell you you're still not fast enough like oh i see you're drenched in sweat and about to collapse cool maybe pick up the pace and the same kind of sentiment to a lesser extent was like um um, also given to me by the employees like they're like i don't know like they thought like some kind of classism or something but um, that I was like, shouldn't have been there. I should, was, which is what I was thinking, but like their idea was like, Oh, you, you don't belong with us or something like that. But anyway, um, that was the position that I was holding for maybe like three months at most. And, uh, then we enter into this evil supervisor that I had. Her name was Patrice. She worked at the Bailey's Crossroads uh, post office in 2018. I'm not sure if she's still there, but, uh, the woman was completely obsessed with me and not in any kind of, uh, way that would have been weird, but this was kind of, um, worse in some sense because she was like one of the NPCs in a video game who just lives to make your life harder. I was fresh out of training, hadn't even figured out where the bathroom was yet. And she comes at me like, you don't know where your timesheet is by now? And yeah, yeah, sure, Patrice. Because that's what they cover in grad school, <laughs> timesheet 101. And every single day, it was like auditioning for a reality TV show called Post Office Tyrant. She'd mock me like, oh, you're doing your best? Well, your best sucks. I mean, I've had, a, I've had bad bosses before, but this was kind of next level. My coworkers, oh yeah. They were there, just standing around like NPCs watching it all happen. And, um, and they, they weren't like, uh, like, hey, should, should, should we help him out? And they were like, nah, we're good. Let's see if he survives this level. So about two months in, Patrice starts giving me these motivational speeches. Except her version of a pep talk is you might want to resign, which is, you know, not exactly the uplifting, get out there and crush it advice you'd expect. But hey, I figured um, at, I'd at least try to outlast her constant attempts to, to speed run me out of a job. And then came the quote unquote meeting where Patrice pulls me into the manager's office and I'm thinking, great, I'm about to get fired for walking too slow. Like seriously, how do you get fired for walking? Anyway, she, um, calls the postmaster on a speakerphone and like we're holding a conference call for some corporate man- merger which is pretty much what I should be doing if my education were looked at in a favorable sense by anyone and um, she's there um, fuming trying to set up set me up or something and the, the manager's just like so why are you so slow and I just tell them well I'm walking every second but surprise I'm out of shape walking is hard the manager bless her soul actually agrees with me and goes i think he's telling the truth boom mic drop patrice's face she looked like she just found out her favorite reality show got canceled she was furious shocked and i swear 
a little bit constipated all at the same time. But hey, I never had to work under her again. It's the small victories that count, right? And that, my friends, is how I escaped the wrath of Patrice, a.k.a. the human embodiment of the broken postal system. The moral of the story, if your supervisor hates you for being slow, just tell them you're out of shape, which is probably true, and hope someone with common sense is in the room. And uh, so here's the twist. You think that after winning this victory, he's out of shape and leave him alone debate, I'd stick around, right? Wrong. I quit the very next week. Why, you ask? Because even though I, was scheduled, I wasn't scheduled with Patrice again, there was still the very small possibility that I might accidentally cross paths with her in the hallway or worse, the parking lot. I could just imagine it, running to the car and Patrice lurking around a corner like some sort of UP, USPS final boss. And no thanks, I figured it was better to cut my losses and escape while I was ahead. I mean, I'd already lost a ton of weight from this job, so at least I could leave with that win. Quitting was basically my version of self-care. Some people get ma massages. I, I file my resignation is what I do. So anyway, besides I wasn't about to take any chances, I wasn't going to be the guy who thought he'd escaped only to be pulled back in for one more soul-crushing shift with her. So yeah, I peaced out and uh, of there, hoping to never ever see Patrice again. And honestly, best decision I've made in my life. Quitting felt like ripping off a band-aid, except instead of a little sting, it was I pulled the entire Patrice-sized weight off my back. That's my story. Hopefully it'll inspire you. If you have a situation like that, you should probably just quit your job. And because you deserve better. Thank you for listening.